In an already unstable Europe, World War II breaks out with Germany rising to power. At the helm of the Nazi party is Adolf Hitler, who begins taking over the world. And with Japan as their ally, it wouldn't be long before America gets involved. I was in the regular Navy, so I was in for a good six years. 1944. Thousands of young men fresh out of high school are joining the Navy to fight the war. All my phone you heard guns going off. We were just hoping they didn't come to where we were staying. Following in his brother's and friend's footsteps, Walter Weinmiller goes into the Navy. Anticipating to go over and fight the Japanese in the Pacific, a series of unexpected events happens to Walter. This is his story. You were drafted, as soon as you got out of high school, you were in the Army. Because they were drafting them, you know, 17 and 18, that's what I was. And as soon as you got out of high school, you had to go to the Army. So I enlisted in the Navy. I wanted to go to the Navy instead of the Army. And I was glad I did. That's why Harvey, Willie, and him and I was the best buddies in school. He was a year older than me too, well he was, but he failed. But a lot of people were doing that. They were dropping out of high school their last year. And if you had enough credits like I did at City College, my mother, they told my mother come down and get my diploma. I just missed all the graduation and the prom and the whatever they do you know, at high school. There were many training facilities around the country for soldiers. The Navy were training these young men fast so they could be sent off to war in the Pacific more quickly to counter the Japanese threat. We were probably the first unit of trainers, trainees up in Bainbridge that year. Now a year before that, my brother went in the Navy and Willie, they had to go to Samson, New York for their training because Bainbridge wasn't open. And it was still muddy and everything around Bainbridge. They hadn't finished building that training camp. Many young men like Walter didn't receive enough proper training before being sent off to war. It was a boot camp, it was a mess. They kept you so many weeks and just tried to teach you discipline. You tried to get on whatever you wanted to get involved with. They do enough to get you out of boot camp. You come out of seamen first and they sent it to some place and we were sent to Philadelphia. Willie Smith, he went to the uh, USS North Dakota battleship. He was up in Philly when I went up, got up to Philly. And that's how I seen him. I went over and seen him. The battleship was still in, I hadn't left yet for war. The quickest way for naval ships along the East Coast to reach the Pacific is through the Panama Canal. We had to go down to the canal zone. We had to unload all the ammunition before we went through the Panama Canal. And I, being a little guy, that ammunition got heavy. And yeah, they were in line passing it. And then when we got to the other side, we had to reload it <laughs> after they let the ship go through the lock. And then we went out to Pacific into the Past the time zone on, at the equator, and new guys like me took initiation going through. There was a lot of danger for ships sailing across the Pacific from Japanese planes flying overhead. When you're going across, every one of us give the laundry one of your white sailor hat, and they dyed them all blue because if you went topside at night, they didn't want that white showing. You know, them little Japanese would come fucking fly by. 
As Walter's ship headed over to Indonesia, battles with the Japanese continued on. By the time he reached Indonesia and the Pacific, most of the fighting was over, and islands in the Philippines were already taken. The troops were already landed there and took care of The whole fleet was over there where they took the, the lady Filipina on the, the next island down was uh, the Admiralty Island. A gang of us that came out of boot camp together, they kept us on a ship and they took us down there. Japanese prisoners were often sent around to different ships. Walter's ship had prisoners working with them. We were loading filling helium trailer uh, bottles with uh, gas with workforce from the Japanese that were in our camp captured. And that, and that was when uh, one of those bottles, big bottles, he, popped open, hit me in his shoulder, and broke my collarbone. After getting hurt, the Navy sent Walter to an island with a rehab center to heal and rest. Yeah, the only place I could, they could take me was Manus Island, which was very attached to the Admiralty, but there was no doctors or anything where we were staying. And they put a screw in there, and then they sent me down to Lake Santana in New Guinea for a rest period. What, what, what is it? Nothing on there. I mean, natives and that, and merchant ships come in. Many of the men stationed next to islands became friends with the natives and spent time together doing activities. They'd go to get us fish. Well, we'd throw dynamite in the water and stun the fish, and they'd come to the top, and these natives used to pick up the fish and put it in buckets and we pulled up on to have fresh fish on the ship to eat, <laughs> yeah! They forgot I was there. I was there for over a month. I was supposed to be down there for a week. When I was on that island, when the war ended, the war ended, and they started sending everybody home, but the gang I was originally with had already gone. So uh, after I don't know how many months, it was over there quite a while, uh, troop ships started bringing the troops back. And I come back on a troop ship to San Diego. We'd be cruising and we'd sit out on the fan tail. It was so nice out there and quiet. And they'd have movies outside on the fan tail. Walter's experience in the Navy during the war was nothing like what he had expected. Getting hurt from an accident to being left on an island and forgotten about by the Navy, Walter's unexpected journey is just one out of thousands of different adventures many soldiers had in the Navy during World War II.